Hi, Hi folks. folks! Thanks for joining us on this video. If you're new here, I'm Willie. And I'm Sarah. We're a musician and artist who escaped suburbia and now live in a nearly 200 year old cottage on the Isle of Skye in the Scottish Highlands with our dogs, Jack Spaniels, and the newest member of our clan, Puppy Nori. This week, snowstorms sweep the island, leaving a blanket of deep snow and making it almost impossible to get out of the glen. Join us as our puppy experiences snow for the very first time and we start to wonder just how much longer will be snowed in at Skylife Cottage? Will we have enough supplies to see us through the extreme weather? Or will it be down to Yolanda, our Land Rover Defender, to fight her way bravely through the snow, out the wintry glen and save the day for Team Skylife? Join, Join us, us as we continue! continue. Live in the Skylife morning to a little thin covering of snow overnight and it was quite sunny and clear and then this big huge cloud loomed up over the cottage and it's hit and now it's snowing. This is the first snow of this winter. It still makes me as excited as a child. I love snow. What is this Jack? Snowing! Nari, is this your first snowstorm? And he's completely ignoring it in favour of a stick. Wow. That light is so dramatic, but it's very quickly fading. Sun hasn't even come up over the hill yet. Right boys, I think it's time to go inside, don't you? Jack's more white than black dog now. Well, that's one way to keep warm, I guess. It's not big fluffy flakes yet, it's still quite small ones, but it might come because we are due to get quite a bit of snow this week. I'm very excited about it now. Ask me again in a couple of days and we'll see. Guys, Jack, it's just a stick. It's never just a stick when it comes to spaniels. I think it's fair to say Nori quite likes snow. It does. Maybe, Yay! Cup of tea! Maybe some hot tea. Good, because my hands are very cold right now. I know, mine's been earlier. I think they're quite enjoying the snow. Well, we've had some fun running around in the snow, but now it's time to go inside and get warm. I'm in the kitchen and I'm making bread, but not because I just wanted to make bread. I'm making bread because I have to make bread because we don't have any. We had an Asda delivery today to pick up. Sarah was going to go in the car and I asked her not to because it's too snowy. It's wild, wild snow will just come overnight. So I've made some bread and I've made it before, so I'm not going to put the whole process on the channel. But if you want to check out this video up here, I made bread in that video so you can see it there. This is what it's like sometimes living on Sky. I can't just go to the shop because the shop is way over in the next glen. To get over there I'd have to drive and you can't get over the hill because it's not been gritted. So this is just one of the things but it's a small price to pay for living somewhere so nice, you know. Anyway, so this is the bread that I've been making. <laughs> I've already proved it once, this is the second proving, so I'm just waiting for the yeast that's in there to make it rise again. Then I'll put it in the oven for about 25 minutes, 180 degrees, and uh, yeah, then we'll have bread. The bread's now risen, so I'll put it in the oven at 180 degrees Celsius for 25 minutes. And that's the bread done. As I say, if you look at the other episode, you'll see my recipe and how I make it from scratch. And this is what it looks like now. Delicious fresh bread. And uh, I probably wouldn't have made it today except for the fact that I had to. Hope you enjoyed watching anyway.
First we introduced Nori to tennis balls, and now it's snowballs. He doesn't seem as interested as Jack. What's this, Nori? Whoa! Whoa! Find it! Where'd it go, Jack? Hours of fun. Ready? I don't even know where that went. He just threw it straight in the air. <laughs> straight up. Nori's gone off piste. Hiya, pal! Snow started falling again. It's the perfect kind of ball for Jack Spaniels because as soon as he gets it, it disintegrates. So we can't guard it. You can't drop it on the other side of the fence and whine about it. Or under the kayak. Or under the kayak. And then I'll have to move the entire kayak. <laughs> and then he spends about 10 minutes looking for it. You found it yet? Nori's gone off piste again. No, he's got it. No, he just snuffled it to death. I genuinely can't tell which tracks are Jack's and which tracks are Norrie's on the on the snow. Yeah, he's got big paws, eh? He's less than half the size, but his paws are the same size. Snow day. Uh, snow day is still work day for us. This is our place of work. I think those sheep are having to eat the tree because they can't get to the grass. Welcome back to the Skyleaf Cottage Kitchen. Today I'm going to make Colin Skink, which is a soup. It's kind of like a chowder actually. It's made with smoked haddock, onions, potatoes mainly. It's called Colin Skink because it was invented in the village of Cullen, which is in the north of Scotland. It's not too far from Aberdeen actually. And skink is just a hoch or knuckle of beef in Old Scots. Most soups back then had a hoch of beef in them and that's why it sort of generalised and became the name of a soup. So it's Colin Skink from the village of Colin soup, if you like. Let's crack on and get it made. <laughs> to make Colin skink, you will need chopped smoked haddock. This is the dyed type, which I don't like as much, but I couldn't get the undyed stuff, so that'll just have to do. This is onions and leeks, celery stalks and carrots, which will be cooked in the soup, but removed. Fresh double cream, vegetable and chicken stock cubes to be added to boiling water. A generous knob of butter. And this is diced potato and water, and a whole potato, but we'll come back to that. Warm your pan up, put your butter in, let that melt. Add a little bit of salt, and that's so the vegetables sweat because it brings the moisture out. In with your leeks and onions. You just want to sweat these off until they go translucent, coating them in butter. Got this on a low setting now. Next goes in our chicken and vegetable stock. This is really concentrated, so I'll put that in. But I'm also gonna add water as well. I've already boiled the kettle. And into there goes the carrots and celery stalks to be removed later. And bring that up to a gentle boil before I turn it down. I added some more water there because it wasn't enough, so I just boiled the kettle and poured some more in. And that noise in the background that you can hear, that's the two dogs eating their dinner. Sarah's been pop sitting while I've been cooking, and she's just come through and fed the dogs. They're very hungry because we're out in the snow today, so it's very cold. And that's why I have the fishing jacket on. Yeah, my fishing jacket. It's just slightly too big for you. <laughs> yeah, it's warm though. I bet it is. Right, I want to carry on with this cook. Let's make some soup. All right, the soup's had about half an hour now. It's time to get those stock vegetables out. And here's my trick for thickening the soup. Remember the one peeled potato? Well, grated. So we take the carrots out. Sure, we'll use them for something else. And the celery. Then with the grated potato. 
and all that does is thicken up. I'll just let that cook now for about, I don't know, 10 minutes or so until the potato is completely softened and basically just turned into a texture more than anything else. Right, so that's now sort of turned into just a sort of texture in the soup. And now for the rest of the potatoes, turn the heat up. I'll give them about 10 minutes as well, maybe 15, depending on how long it takes for the potatoes to soften. And the last thing is the fish, but not until the potatoes are almost completely cooked. Okay, the potatoes are nearly done. So I'm gonna put the fish in next. Give that a stir and put the temperature up again. Bring it up to a little gentle boil and then turn it down. Probably only take about six or seven minutes for that to cook through. Okay, that's pretty much done now. As you can see, beautiful silky soup. You could serve it like this. That's not how you do it traditionally though. Traditionally, you add double cream. So that's what I'm doing but it's optional. It wouldn't really be cull and skink if you didn't have the cream. It would just be smoked haddock soup, I suppose. And stir that through, bring it up to heat again, and it's done. So what do you think then? It was really nice. Yeah? Yeah. She's eaten a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I've never really been a big fan of Cullen skink, it's always been a bit too like thick and rich, but that was really nice. That was a good balance. I'm allowed to make it again? Yeah, okay. Excellent, cool. I, I like it when you make these things. Because we've got a whole pot of soup now, we don't have to do any more cooking. For the week, yeah, it's great. <laughs> Amazing. No, I loved it as well, it was really tasty. So, Cullen skink on the scale of soups, um, your favourite is sep soup, isn't it? Mushroom soup? Of the homemade ones, yeah, I think sep soup is the, is the best. And where would you place that? It's eight out of ten. Ooh. I can't eat a lot of it and like someone mm -hmm. <laughs> just demolished two bowls of it, but it was really nice. Yeah, mm. nice one. So there you go, Cullen Skink. If you do make it, let me know in the comments below. We were all set to take the dogs out for a walk in the snow. Nari gets his 15 minutes and then he gets wrapped in a big fleecy blanket and put in the backpack for a little bit more so Jack gets a proper walk. And we were going to take Yolanda out to go around to the forest track and just test it out and give it a run in the snow. The sticking point there was that we couldn't get Yolanda out because there was so much snow. Something about the low ratio gears wasn't working. So Richard came round to have a look. The boys, with a little bit of help from me, dug Yolanda out and we salted the tracks. They drove off about 10-15 minutes ago and haven't been back since, so I'm not sure how long they're going to be. I'm hoping they're not doing too much off-roading in this weather, but it's pretty much all off-road at the moment in the Glen because we don't get gritted down here. So I figured I can't take them out for a walk by myself with the two of them. I can't take Jack out and leave Nari, so I'm just going to get on with some Etsy orders that have come through. Don't know when they'll get out because there's been no post in or out of the island for the last three days. And obviously I haven't been able to get to the post office either. So I'll just get the orders done and I'll send them whenever I can. <laughs> Meanwhile, Richard and I were testing the low gearbox issue I had back on the driveway. It might have been down to the gear oil being too cold or any number of other issues, however, once we dug Yolanda out and got her on the level ground, we couldn't replicate the fault. So I'm not sure what was going on there, but I'll keep an eye on this and I'll mention it at our next service. After testing the gears, Richard very kindly gave me a very helpful lesson in snow driving as a plan to drive to Portree the next day to buy food. After almost two weeks of no food shopping, by this point our supplies and emergency supplies were running very low indeed. But would I make it out the Glen the next day? Stay tuned to find out. Well, I managed to get the prints done at least, and as you can see, the boys are not making it easy when they're in rampage mode, but I didn't really have a choice, I just needed to get on with some work. I was supposed to go to the post office on Tuesday this week. It's now Thursday, I haven't managed to go, and I probably won't get to go until Monday now, so... Such is life, living on an island. Sometimes the post doesn't get in, doesn't get out, and hopefully my customers will be understanding. Willie is now taking Jack out for a walk because we've decided it's too cold for Nari to go out in the snow, so he's just gonna destroy my studio, apparently. Good boy. So he's gonna stay here with me. I'm hopefully gonna tire him out and then get him in his crate to have a little sleep while I get on some more work. Wish me luck.
You know, if you don't roll in the snow, this won't happen. You don't have to roll in the snow. It's not essential. Apparently it is essential. At first I thought there may be a scent under there that he's rolling in. I don't think there is, I think he's just daft. Look at you! Are you daft? You're covered! Well, I'm sure that was fun anyway. I heard that Nori's a fashion designer now. Yep. A redesigner. How's that? Excuse the outfit, because this is what I wear in the mornings when we're running around the house. My pyjamas are now a little bit more risque than they were <laughs> ten minutes ago. It's just ventilation. Oh yeah, because we need it when it's snowy outside. Oh my god. I can fix that. Look, That's fine. Look, though. Hole. I mean, what's he doing just now? Paul destroying a stick like he's not supposed to. Oh yeah. You take your eye off him for one second and mischief happens. You keep your eye on him for it all the time and mischief happens anyway. You are the mischief maker, aren't you? The good thing is, I do actually have new pyjamas. It's just I can't wear them yet because A, he'd destroy them like these and B, they're about four inches too long because I've got incredibly short legs. So I'm waiting for the seamstress in Broadford to be open so I can get them taken up. <sighs> Roll on the end of the biting jumping stage is all I can say. Doing some sewing. Yep. Very inexpertly mending my pyjama bottoms that someone... Maybe no names eggs. mentioned. Nice little shuffle there. Good timing. Doing a sterling job there. <laughs> I'm really not. I, I normally am. do this, don't I? I normally do the sewing in this house, but for some reason you've taken it upon yourself to do it yourself. Well, to be honest, if I wanted them done well, I'd get Willie to do it. But I was actually putting them on the other night and I caught my foot in the hole and ripped it even bigger. So they're kind of beyond repair at the moment. I'm just mending them enough that I can keep using them until we can actually use nice things again without them being destroyed. Mm -hmm. So this is just... Uh, what's the word? Tack and stitch. Uh, I don't know, it's probably not even that. I'm sewing to the best of my ability and hopefully it'll keep the hole closed because it's quite drafty, it's quite cold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Having a massive hole in your pyjamas. Yeah, you didn't want that ventilation, did you? Don't recommend. Nori, are you going to rip mummy's trousers again? Or is once enough? You're going to do it again, aren't you? <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. Well, it's not the prettiest or the best job in the world, but hopefully they've got a bit of life in them yet and I can keep them out of reach of Nori the Destroyer. Well, all the food shop deliveries to the island are cancelled today, so I'm going to go and get in the car and go and get the stuff. Now, normally Sarah does the shop because I'm not allowed to go food shopping because I buy lots of rubbish. And uh, I've got to do some errands for you as well. Eh? Yeah, a strict list of messages. Messages. Right? That's what we say in Scotland for shopping. Mm -hmm. So you've got to go to the post office, drop off my Etsy orders because my postage labels are about to expire because they were supposed to go on Tuesday. Get some eggs, nice fresh crofters eggs and check for our meat delivery from the butchers because I don't know if that managed to get through or not. Right, I've got a lot to do, so I better crack on. Okay, let's do this. Right, let's see what these roads are like now. They've been absolutely terrible. Let's hope there's been an improvement as it's thawed a bit overnight. Let's get going. Going super slow till I get to the top of this bit here. I'm touching the brakes and no more. And the reason for that is if I start sliding here, I'll either end up going over the side there or I'll go through that gate. So now I've got to run down to the gate and open the gate <laughs> so I can carry on to the bottom. Here we go. I'm just letting the car take me down. I can't touch the brakes here or it's game over. Super low revs, hardly touching the steering wheel. Turning now, and the car's going where I want it to go, which is great. Now, 
I can stop. It was bad enough when it was compacted snow, but now there's slush and ice and water all on top of each other. It's just absolute chaos, which is why I decided to do this. Sarah's a good driver, but I've been driving around the Highlands since I was 17 years old. This is the kind of environment that I learned to drive in, so I'm used to it much more. So I really didn't want her to do it. And I want to do it myself. No dogs, no Sarah, just me. Let's get on. Then I let them by. I hope I can start again. Come on, Yolanda. Come on, go. There we go. The snow here is almost a foot deep. I'm in second gear here. And the reason I'm in second gear, I don't want to go up to third because then they'll be chugging up the hill. I want to have enough for the gear to uh, pull me up the hill but without spinning the wheels. So I'm not going above one and a half thousand revs. I'm respecting the snow and the road and just taking my time. I'm coming up to the bit that I'm most worried about because this corner here is pretty scary. You come down the hill and um, it's quite a bend. So I've got the car in low ratio gearing now. I'm crawling along. I don't use the low box often. In fact, I don't use it at all really. It's mainly for off-road, but the conditions right now are so crazy that uh, I've decided to go this route. I just hope nothing comes up behind me, because I'm going so slow. The diff is locked, so all four wheels are spinning at the same time, whereas normally they can spin independently, and I don't want that. I want it to be all locked. It gives me a bit more control of these conditions. It's ice and slush and water and snow all at once. So I'm going to use it to get me down there and round that corner. Otherwise, I could end up going off the corner. And this is why we have a Land Rover Defender, you know? If it wasn't for this car, if we had the previous car, we would be stuck in the Glen. We wouldn't be going anywhere. When we get down to Carbost, um, the roads from there on will be gritted. And that was the main corner. That was the bit I was really worried about. So that's done now. I feel so much happier. Arguably, this bit's even worse. It's... Uh, pretty crazy. I'm not gonna lie, I am quite anxious because I'm not used to this. I'm not gonna get used to it unless I do it. So I need to do it. I need to know that I can do this. I need to know that I can provide and bring stuff to the family. Otherwise, what the heck was the point in buying this Land Rover, you know? You can see the snow melt on the road um, and by tomorrow I'll probably all be gone knowing my luck. But then again, you never know. It could freeze overnight again and then we're in a worse situation. I feel like the cars under control, it's going nice and slowly. If there was an issue, if I did come off the road, the snow at the side would probably help stop me. And if I did come off the edge, then of course, you know, I'm going really slow. So that would at least help. I think that's the worst part of this stretch done now. And finally, I spy a gritted road. So I'm just checking there's nothing coming because once I start, that's it, I'm going. This is all really slushy and icy. Well, that is me now on the gritted road and I feel so relieved. Oh my goodness, that was quite sketchy. But at least now I know that I can do it, even if I have a slight heart attack in the process. Well, I made it to Carbost. First part is done. The rest of the road should be all gritted, aside from when I get back to the hills again on the way home. So hopefully it'll have melted a bit by then. But I'm not going to lie, that was uh, pretty sketchy. But I am really chuffed that I did it though. And uh, yeah, let's get the shopping in. And by complete contrast, this is what the road looks like when it's gritted. Just round the corner from where I was. Okay, made it to Portree, no bother at all. Those roads were easy, because they were all gritted. It's almost like the first part didn't happen. But it did. Right, so that's the food shop done. And Sarah never lets me do it because I always spend too much and always buy a load of rubbish. And I've done just that once again. She's gonna kick my a Oh dear, oh well. This is why I only do it about once a year. It was so cold in the glen that I noticed ice forming on the surface of the loch in these thin rafts. The body of water is actually the sea. It's mainly salt water. 
However, the river that flows into the loch is fresh water. The fresh water floats on top of the salt water, which is the reason only the top layer of the loch freezes in places into these thin rafts. In some of Scotland's deeper sea lochs, which also have rivers running into them, it's possible to catch freshwater fish such as rainbow trout close to the surface and catch saltwater species such as pollock on the same fishing lure. All you have to do is allow the lure to sink further down into the salt water below. Nearly back of the house and this is the part of the road that I've been most worried about, just crawling up this hill. Most of it's actually melted now, it's still really slippery underneath, it's quite a gradient, I'm not sure what it looks like on screen, but this is some gradient in real life, I think it should be fine now. The whole time you're looking ahead, making sure there's nothing coming, because if there is, you've got to act miles in advance to get off the road in a safe place. It's a very different ball game to normal driving. And although it's quite dicey sometimes, it's also loads of fun. I'm on low box again. Even then the car is sliding around, snaking around. What it is, is there's water on the top and there's slush, but there's ice underneath. Right at the top of the hill now. Yeah, this is no messing around here. This is the worst part. I'm not taking any risks. I'm going at a snail's pace. I just got this car. I have no intention of wrecking it, or myself for that matter. I don't want to block the road as well for other people to use. So here we go. Nice and slow, slow and steady, hopefully wins the race. You can see the ice melt on the path there. And you can also see where the wheels from other vehicles have come down here and wriggled around all over the road. As this one is, at the moment, I'm going about two miles an hour or three. And I'm not going to go any faster. If someone comes by me, I'll pull into a safe spot. But I ain't going any faster because there's a big chance that I'll lose control of the vehicle and come off the road or scrape it along that barricade on the right or worse go in the ditch on the left. So I'll be taking my sweet time. I am so glad to be back in our driveway. That was pretty crazy. Okay, so it was exciting and I enjoyed it. But on the flip side of that, it was pretty scary at times. And uh, I'm just glad to be back home and have all our food. And I'm glad that Sarah's safe and the dogs are safe and Yolanda's safe and I'm safe. And here I am in the drive with all the food. Happy days. <laughs> watching our video we really hope you enjoyed it and if you did please do leave us a like a comment or subscribe to our channel if you don't already it's free to do and it really helps us out all right if you do wish to support the channel further you can do so over on coffee you could buy us a coffee or you could buy the dogs a wee treat or if you want to help us out more long term you can join our community over on patreon where you get loads of bonus content for helping us out every month without our coffee supporters and our patrons these videos just couldn't happen so thank you so much for your support if you enjoy following our adventures and you want to see a bit more, we do also have Instagram and Facebook if you want to join us over there. We got our first reel with a million views on Instagram based on a Scottish word that your parents taught you. If you want a bit more insight into living the sky life, you can follow us over there. And all the links to our pages are in the video description. Below! <laughs> Thank you once again for watching and we will see you next week! Woo! <laughs> Living a suburban life Moving over the sea to sky Are we chasing a dream? I guess in time we will see When we're living the sky life Living the sky life Ah uh ah! -uh. No biting! No biting! No biting! Good boy! If you're wondering, these are my patent pending smartphone gloves. Each one has a hole on the finger so I can use my phone. I've got hair everywhere. You've got hair everywhere, I hope not. Aye. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> set to take the dogs out for a little one. We were all set to take the dogs out for a little walk in the snow. <clears throat> yes, Nori, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, say by Instagram, we've got our first million. Whatever it is, I don't even know what it is. I don't know what Instagram is. I'm not allowed near the Instagram, let's be honest. I might break it.
Why don't you come with us? Well, me. <laughs> it's just me. <laughs> I'm going myself. I'm talking about. I'll do that. The again. royal we. Yeah, the royal we. Come with us. All right, let's do that again. Don't you flippin' dare. Click here to subscribe to Live in the Sky Life. Click here to go back to the start of our adventures with our very first episode.